1971, Falk, Arkansas. Ten miles south of Texarkana, Bobby Ford was out behind his house with his hunting friends, a Mr. Taylor and Bobby's brother, Don Ford. It wouldn't be too outlandish to say that the group may have been uneasy that night. For the past few days, something had been approaching the family's home. On that prior Wednesday, it had made its way onto the porch, startling the wives of Bobby and Don. Then, that Friday, it attempted to enter the home. But this night in May, the group of men was out back when suddenly they heard Bobby's wife, Elizabeth, start to scream. Again, something was happening. Elizabeth is reported to have said, I saw the curtain moving on the front window and a hand sticking through the window. At first I thought it was a bear's paw, but it didn't look like that. It had heavy hair all over it and it had claws. I could see its eyes. They looked like coals of fire, real red, she said. It didn't make any noise, except you could hear it breathing. Startled, the men quickly made their way toward the house, shining a flashlight, trying to see what it was that could be making Elizabeth scream, though they had a good idea of what they would find. It didn't take long to spot it. There, up against the back of the house, was a seven-foot-tall, hairy, man-like creature with a barrel chest. Bobby, Don, and Charles began shooting at the creature, attempting to either scare it away from the home or kill it. Don Ford is quoted as saying, We shot several times at it then, and then called Ernest Walriven, Constable of Folk. He brought us another shotgun and a stronger light. We waited on the porch and then saw the thing closer to the house. We shot again and thought we saw it fall. Bobby, Charles, and myself started walking to where we saw it fall. By that point, the group likely thought that their encounter with the creature was over, at least for that night. But hours later, they were proven wrong. Again, screams erupted from inside the home. This time, Bobby quickly jumped up and ran inside, likely having some of an idea of what waited for him. He is quoted as saying, I was walking the rungs of the ladder to get up on the porch when the thing grabbed me. I felt a hairy arm come over my shoulder, and the next thing I knew, we were on the ground. The only thing I could think about was to get out of there. The thing was breathing real hard, and his eyes were about the size of a half dollar and real red. I finally broke away and ran around the house and through the front door. I don't know where he went. Don and the others ran to where Bobby was, but by the time they arrived, the creature was off of Bobby. The last they saw of it, it was running impossibly fast through the nearby fields. Again, the group called Walrven, the constable. This time, he stayed with the group until 5 a.m. Of the event, he is quoted as saying, I looked through the surrounding fields and woods for about an hour. Then I gave them my shotgun and light. A short time later, they called back and told me they had shot at it again. Unlike law enforcement officials and other sightings, this was not Walrven's introduction to big, hairy, man-like monsters. In the years before the Ford sighting, others in the area had claimed to have had run-ins with big, hairy apes in the fields of Falcon Jonesville. Several persons saw the thing and shot at it, some from close range. They said nothing seemed to stop it. They described it as being about seven feet tall and looking just like a naked man covered with brown hair. Walrven is quoted as saying. After things calmed down at the house, Bobby was taken to a local hospital where he was treated for shock and scratches. Like Bobby, the house had also been shaken up by the creature. According to Bobby, pieces of tin around the edge of the house had been torn off and the window had also been damaged by the beast. Scratch marks were also on the porch that seemed to have been made by a creature with three toes. Out in the mud, tracks that appeared to have been made by a three-toed animal were also reportedly discovered. The family, who had only been at the house for a week, reportedly left days later, rattled by the encounter. Bobby Ford is quoted as saying, I've had it here. I'm going back to Ashdown. The Ford's experience was not unique. Instead, it is one of many encounters that the people of Jonesville and Falk have had with a large bipedal ape in the local fields and swamps, known now as the Boggy Creek Monster or the Falk Monster. In fact, the first recorded sighting happened in 1908, when a 10-year-old girl claimed to have seen the creature by Mercer Bayou. The Fords weren't even the only ones to have a run-in with the creature at home. Sometime in the 1960s, a man known as Smokey Crabtree reportedly had a similar experience to the Fords. For several nights, Crabtree reported that a monster would approach his home, scream, disturb his dogs, and flee. No animals were harmed during these encounters. 
Sightings of the creature continued on into the 30s, 40s, and even into present day. Many of these occurred either on Highway 71 or by Mercer Lake. For example, in the early 60s, a local hunter was out tracking in the woods by Mercer Bayou. The area was flooded, but the man was tracking through anyways. On his way through the woods, he came across what he described as a seven-foot-tall, hairy, man-like animal. He did attempt to approach the creature, but did not have any luck. It quickly disappeared into the watery woods. Ten years later, a family was preparing to go boating in Mercer Bayou, and they started to hear terrible howls and screeches coming from the woods. The family were not the only ones to hear the screams. Three campers who were parked nearby also heard the commotion and came running out with their guns. They did not attempt to shoot it, and it eventually ran away. 2001, in particular, was a hot time for Boggy Creek monster sightings. In one sighting, a hunter ran into the beast out by the lake. Later that year, a fisherman was drift fishing in Mercer Bayou when he suddenly smelled something horrible. Looking around, he tried to identify the smell, maybe a skunk, but when his eyes scanned the bank, he saw something he did not expect to see. A huge, two-legged, hairy creature watching him from the shore. Sightings near sources of water, like the bayou or river, make sense considering the woods would offer shelter, water, and possibly a food source for a large mammal. How plentiful the food in this location is may be up for debate, as in one woman's encounter, the creature is seen eating the food out of her pig's trough and licking out of a dog bowl. Whether or not a bayou could sustain a large primate is also debated by some, and we'll revisit this later. But not all sightings took place by the bayou or in residential areas. A host of encounters occurred on Highway 71 or other nearby roads. The first reported highway encounter we have happened in 1967. It was late, and two teenagers drove down Highway 71. The two were from Texarkana and were not familiar with the Falk monster or creatures like Bigfoot. When they looked out their windows, they saw a hairy creature running down the road. It's reported that they didn't know what it was that they had seen at the time and only understood what it had been when they saw the movie The Legend of Boggy Creek years later. Then, in 1969, a family was driving down the same highway when they came across what they thought to be a man in a fur coat. An odd sight in the middle of the night, the family went in for a closer look only to discover that it wasn't a human at all, but instead some sort of creature which, you guessed it, had thick fur and was walking on two legs. This highway runs by the Sulphur River, which could, again, lend support to the idea that the creature preferred to live or travel through the well-watered areas. The most recent sightings of this creature on Highway 71 come to us from 2018. During this encounter, two women were driving down the road when they saw the creature run across, apparently covering the distance in four great strides. They watched as the creature began running down a road that ran perpendicular to Highway 71. Startled but curious, they turned the car around and went back to look for the beast. Unfortunately for us, by the time they made it back to the spot where the creature had been, it had already vanished. With so many sightings, and so many being similar in nature, we have to ask the question, what exactly is the Falk Monster or Boggy Creek Monster? From the reports, what can we figure out? Most sightings happen at night or in the evening, a bit different from a similar cryptid, Bigfoot, which is often seen during daylight hours. This leads some to suggest that the Falk Monster may be nocturnal. The second question we have to wonder is, if the monster is not a hoax, could a primate actually survive in the bayou? Some primates, like proboscis monkeys or Allen swamp monkeys, have evolved to have webbed fingers, allowing them to live a semi-aquatic life. There is no proof of the monster existing or having webbed fingers or toes, but if one were ever captured, it would be interesting to see if this were indeed the case. On the subject of the creature's feet, it is suspected that the animal is bipedal with three toes. Remember the tracks found at the fords? Those were not the only three-toed tracks found after potential run-ins with the creature. Could the Falk monster be a cousin of Bigfoot? Given the area it is said to inhabit and how its feet differ from that of a Bigfoot, which is said to have a foot more similar to ours, it is possible this could be a different species entirely. Of course, the creature could just be a hoax, a story made up to keep children out of the woods, or just for a bit of fun. Until the Falk monster is caught, we cannot know for sure. Thank you for listening to tonight's story. Tune back in next week as we dive into the world of cryptids, extraterrestrials, and the great unknown. Good night. <laughs>